and those who man the station and support the work. One way or another, many of us in Barmouth are associated with the RNLI. I am privileged to act as chaplain. Sometimes the task is unusual. Earlier in the year, a dolphin was rescued from the shallows and pointed back out to sea. But to return to the theme, the crews are people who are putting their lives on the line. Why do they do it? I believe that if necessary, we too would be able to respond in this way, whether on lifeboats or in many other less dramatic situations, because we are made in the image of God, with the capacity to reflect his nature and goodness and that God is a God who seeks to find and save those in danger, even at great cost to himself. Within the writings of the Bible, the sea, with its power and unpredictability, is often used as a picture of the chaos that threatens our lives and well-being, a threat that is limited by God at creation rebuked by Jesus on the Sea of Galilee and absent from our ultimate heavenly home. John's vision of the new heaven and earth in the book of Revelation does not include the sea. Here is the successful culmination of the rescue mission of Jesus, who accepted the risks and came to defeat the forces of chaos and evil and so to save us. It is not uncommon for Christians to be told that one of the main hindrances to belief, one of the main reasons why people are reluctant to take the claims of Christianity seriously, is the problem of evil or suffering. If God is good, why do people suffer? Why do people lose their lives at sea? Why do they do bad things? Without denying the importance of such questions, they can be turned on their head. If we are simply a few pounds of chemicals, organized by some selfish genes, then why do people do good things? Why do they do it? Because God is good. His actions reflect his nature. He comes to seek and to save, and he made us to be like him, to act in the same sort of way. Of course, the lifeboats are crewed by men and women of all faiths and none, and many would have little time for such religious interpretations. There is simply a job that needs doing, and for whatever reason, they will do it. But when those of us who call ourselves Christians see a lifeboat go out, I think it is inevitable that we see a parable of salvation and that that inevitable question points us to the truth at the heart of our relationship with God. We are his children, made in his image to reflect his goodness. We have been sought and saved and so we are to seek and save others in every sense of those words. Whether we are in need of rescue or trying to bring help, God's strength and guidance are vital. Our next hymn is really a prayer of trust. Father, I place into your hands.
us pray. In joy and hope we pray. We pray to the Father. Hear our prayer. That our risen Saviour may fill us with the joy of his glorious and life-giving resurrection, we pray to the Father. Hear our prayer. That isolated and persecuted churches may find fresh strength in the good news, we pray to the Father. Hear our that God may grant us humility to be subject to one another in Christian love, we pray to the Father. Hear our prayer. That he may provide for those who lack food, work or shelter, we pray to the Father. Hear our prayer. That he may watch over all who travel by land, sea or air, we pray to the Father. Hear our prayer. That by his power, war and famine may cease through all the world. We pray to the Father. Hear our prayer. That he may reveal the light of his presence to the sick, the weak and the dying. To comfort and strengthen them. We pray to the Father. Hear our prayer. That he may send the fire of the Holy Spirit upon his people, so that we may bear faithful witness to his resurrection. We pray to the Father. Hear our prayer. The Lifeboat Prayer. Merciful Father, all things in heaven and earth are held within your loving care. Look with favour upon the Royal National Lifeboat Institution. Protect and bless the crews of all its lifeboats and all who risk their own safety to bring help to others. Guide all who work for the institution that they may be faithful to the vision of its founders, so that it may always be seen as a beacon of hope and light to those who find themselves in peril on the seas. Through the same Jesus Christ, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honour and glory now and forever. Amen. Our final hymn is the traditional hymn of seafarers and a favourite for many with its stirring tune. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. 
Strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the afflicted, honor everyone. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and those you love today and forever. Amen. Well, celebration this morning came from St John's Church in Barmouth and was led by the rector, the Reverend Kevin Horswell. Next Sunday celebration comes from the Salvation Army Citadel in Wrexham.